A gracious good day to one and all once again, tis I. Norton the first, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and protector of Mexico, back with you once again for episode 63 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is June 5th, 2020, and it is our 82nd day under a shelter in place order here in San Francisco. A little bit of housekeeping once again. Don't forget to our Instagram followers. You must now follow the link as we are having much difficulty posting on Instagram. Uh, also, tomorrow's vlog is something a little bit special. Uh, it will include the Countess Lola Montez, but, well, I don't want to give it away. So you'll, you'll see tomorrow afternoon. It's a very, very special day in the Empire. We missed our national days yesterday, and we apologize for that. We try to stay on top of these things, but sometimes we miss them. So let's cover June 4th. First of all, it was Old Maid's Day. Is there still such a thing as an old maid? I don't think I've heard that term in a very long time. It was National Tailor's Day, so uh, thank you for all the tailors out there, including the ones that made our fine imperial uniform. Hug Your Cat Day. Well, I don't think I have to worry about that. I hug many cats. National Cheese Day. So uh, eat more cheese today to make up for yesterday, I guess. And National Moonshine Day. Well, uh, that sounds good. Let's get into today. Uh, National Donuts Day. You know, donuts make my brown eyes blue. It is also National Attitude Day and uh, National Gingerbread Day, Hot Air Balloon Day, World Environment Day, which I thought would be Earth Day, but apparently there's a separate day for that. And uh, let's see, also it is the Festival of Popular Delusions Day. Hmm. We won't go there. Well, let's get on with our major Bay Area event uh, today. A solemn day indeed and once again we rely on John Ralston's wonderful book This Date in San Francisco. It goes on June 5th 1981 the Centers for Disease Control Atlanta publishes the first account of a strange infection. Toward the end of 1980 strange illnesses had appeared among gay men, nausea, fatigue, gastrointestinal disorders, and odd lesions. By mid-1981, the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta was recording multiple cases of pneumocystis carini pneumonia, PCP. PCP had been prominently noticed in post-World War II European refugees, but had been controllable. In 1981, however, it was appearing in young men who should have been healthy. June 5th, 1981, issue of the CDC publication Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report MMWR had an article on uh, pneumocystis pneumonia in about outbreaks in Los Angeles. Based on Los Angeles cases seen by doctors, Michael Godlieb and Joel Weissman, the article described five biopsy confirmed infections, all in actively gay young men. Two of the patients had died. An editorial note added that the cases were remarkable in that pneumocystis almost exclusively occurs in patients whose immune systems had been severely suppressed. Its occurrence in five previously healthy individuals without a clinically apparent underlying immunodeficiency is unusual, the article said. The only apparent underlying cause of the immunodeficiency therefore seemed to have, have connection with a homosexual lifestyle just what was unclear. The MMWR article went on, was the world's first report on what would soon be recognized as the acquired immune deficiency syndrome, the infamous AIDS pandemic. Soon after its appearance, PCP appeared in gay neighborhoods in New York, San Francisco, and other cities. PCP was soon followed by reports of a previously obscure uh, necrotic looking lesion called Kaposi's sarcoma. KS. The first KS case in San Francisco was seen at about the time of the MMWR article. As AIDS spread in San Francisco, the connection with the human immunodeficiency virus HIV was discovered. 
in January 1983, San Francisco General Hospital opened Ward 86, a pioneer clinic for AIDS patients. The San Francisco model has inspired similar treatment clinics nationally. AIDS treatment, however, remains just treatment, not a cure. As one researcher recently put it, this thing, HIV, is a hell of a lot smarter than we are. And as of uh, last year, the latest figures I could find, 700,000 Americans have died of AIDS and AIDS-related infections. 32 million, that's right, 32 million worldwide. A sad day indeed. Let's get on to our other events for today. 1851, the anti-slavery novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, first published in serial form in the National Era magazine. 1920, the first rivet driven on Bank of Italy headquarters at One Powell in San Francisco. Of course, that would later become Bank of America. 1933, the U.S. drops the gold standard when Congress enacts a joint resolution nullifying creditors' right to, be, to demand payment in gold. 1947, U.S. Secretary of State George Marshall outlines the Marshall Plan to rebuild Western Europe after World War II. 1964, Davy Jones and the King Bees debut a single called I Can't Help Thinking About Me. But the group disbands. However, Davy Jones goes on to success as David Bowie. On this date in 1968, Sirhan Sirhan shoots presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy three times. He will die the next day at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles, just after RFK had won the California primary that year. Let's get on to our births today. 1878, Pancho Villa, the Mexican Revolutionary General and guerrilla leader. 1895, William Boyd, better known as Hopalong Cassidy. 1934, Bill Moyers, news commentator. 1941, actor, monologist, Spalding Gray. 1947, artist and musician, Laurie Anderson, who also happens to be Lou Reed's widow. 1956, Richard Butler, the uh, singer for the band, The Psychedelic Furs. 1962, Jeff Garland, uh, famous for Curb Your Enthusiasm. 1971, Mark Wahlberg. Of course, we know him mostly as an actor now, an Academy Award nominated for movies like Boogie Nights and The Departed. But uh, he got his start as a rap singer, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Deaths today. 1900, Stephen Crane, American novelist, uh, wrote The Red Badge of Courage. 1910, O. Henry, whose real name was William Sidney Porter. Uh, dies at 47. 1998, Mayor Sam, for all of our Angelinos out there, Sam Yorty. 1999, Mel Torme, The Velvet Fog. And 2002, Dee Dee Ramone, the band The Ramones. 2004, Ronald Reagan, 40th President of the United States, whose inaction made the AIDS pandemic much, much worse. And 2012, Ray Bradbury, the great science fiction writer, Fahrenheit 451. And 2018, fashion designer, Kate Spade. Well, that wraps it up for this edition today. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay inside. If you go outside, wear a mask, especially if you are participating in some of the protests going on right now. Be safe, don't take any chances. Don't take unproven cures that you may have heard about through various sources that don't know what they're talking about. And until we see you again, a gracious good day.